Um, hi YouTube, it's me Noah. I'm just here, you know, usual. I'm just here doing the usual stuff. I was gonna be here um, showing you. I have trading surge right over there, but you know, I'm you know want to test out my skills and see how it would be. Cause yeah, training surge are good and all the training, but I want to train with a real one, not for cutting, but to actually show you the different guards that you would take with a European loan suit and show you how quickly someone who has somewhat of training can use a longsword. So um, this is my Cold Steel Italian longsword. I'm gonna put my scabbard right there. And it's um, pretty decently balanced. You know, I think the powder, the ballad is about, okay, I'm not really good with that balance. Uh, it's about right here, I think? I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, it's very light, you know? You can just, and get into this type of guard, and then I can stab this way. So it's a very light, very good sword at Cold Steel Main, and I love it. So I'm, it's kind of, okay, it's kind of a little bit sharp, but not too sharp. I'll sharp it later and do some more cutting videos with it. For right now, I'm just going to show you the different guards that you would take with it. So, and I, there's different types of, well, there's long surge in Europe, just around the world. Long surge was around from like about the 12, let me put that on my shoe. Actually, that's going to stab me. So, um, long swords were used approximately from the 1200s all the way, I want to say, to like 1599? Because it originally went from like knights, and also the original, the origins of long sword fencing would probably go from people two-handed grabbing a arming sword or one-handed sword. And then they were like, hey, we can make, we should make the grip longer. So they started making a hand and a half sword and then it went to a long sword. And there's also other swords like there's, there's the long, or, okay, here's the different categories of long swords, like type of two-handed sword that you can use. There's the hand and a half sword or AKA bastard sword. There's the sword of war, which is a, large version of a long sword. Then there's a long sword, which is, this is a typical, if you de Libre would have used these types of long swords, you know, this is an Italian style of long sword that would have been used more for cut. No, wait, that was a, not a cut. I meant to use for stabs, cuts, and yeah, basically stabs and cuts. And you could also just password it for a epic for a more powerful cut or a more bash with the pommel or the cool on and it's a very interesting style of long sword there are different types of long sword blades there are ones that are primarily meant for cutting there are ones that are meant primarily for stabbing and there, there are ones like this which is a good cut and stab type of long sword. So you can stab and cut with them. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna show you the different types of long sword guards that you can take. And I'm gonna pose it right here so you can see me. Alright, so first guard that you wanna first you wanna get into a nice good stand. So again, wanna put your foot straight like this. Like uh, if you can see me, you're gonna wanna Put your foot straight like this, like like an L. Think about it like an L, you guys. All right, so your forward foot is going to be the line of the L, so like this. And then your back foot is going to be more of like the L that's facing behind you and directly in front, like away from you. If you guys can understand that. I don't even understand it. Hopefully you guys do. But, um... Yeah, so the reason why you want to do that, if I was standing still, someone could push me down easily and I could lose my balance more easier. But if you want, also another thing, you want to bend your knees. So in this, if someone pushes me, I could literally just do that. Like, you know, if someone pushes me, I could literally just do that. Or I could just, and get back into form. So it's very good. They, work from the ground up. It's very good to get on work on your legs because you can see this is from like, I mean, not as good, but still got some calves because I've been doing um, 
SCA reprints from the Steel Cavaliers, which wherever they are, I hope them the best of luck and they're really cool guys that we would fence and I would actually always work on that footwork. And the reason why I'm saying rape reprints is because when we're talking about the footwork, you could literally use you could incorporate long surf footwork and the rape reprints footwork. It's all the same basically. Some minor tweaks and stuff. But yeah, all basically European sword fight. I mean, I think just any type of sword fighting or martial arts style footwork will be the same. Sometimes will be a little bit different, but everything is just the same in a sense when it comes to fighting. You know, we're trying to, in, the, that, in those days, you, they were trying to kill each other or do duels or just ritual duels and, or battlefield games or just for fun. So anyways, um, enough about me ranting. Let's get into the fun stuff. So remember the footwork, right? Now I'm going to teach you how, well, I'm not going to teach you how to hold a sword. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is, like you wanna, you could do the handship grip or you could do, if you're gonna do the hammer grip, here's a way that you could do it that would make it way better and you could put it in the handship grip. So what you wanna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to have, grab, grab the sword first with these fingers. With, no, actually these fingers, grab the sword first. Then with these and your index finger and your pinky, wrap it around and the same thing with your, um, you're, you're non-dominant. And now, if you're, let's say you're going to a guard called long point, you literally, you're in a handshake group. So when you're gonna cut from the first guard, we're gonna learn high guard, AKA roof guard, you can literally go cut through long point and your hands are in a handshake grip, and that's gonna give you more structural power and it's gonna like, like if you're in a hammer grip, you're not gonna get any, you know, it's, you can still do a hammer grip, but you gotta, not hold it like a baseball. Don't hold it like this. You can still hold it like, like if you're talking about a hand half. So yeah, you would have to hold it like this. But if you're gonna hold it like this, like still have the hands somewhat apart, so you can get that mover because you could still, you know, I could still do the cuts from there. But like, oh, actually, here's the thing. You don't want to hammer it like. Okay, how you hold it in a baseball? Like, don't hold it like a baseball at base. So like this grip because they don't just because that doesn't give you power is your power comes from this hand because you're gonna pivot like that. That gives the cut the power. So not like this, more like light, but still, but still be able to like, be able to control your blade, okay? Don't just wildly swing it around like a freaking barbarian. It's not baseball. So um, not, not against the guy that's behind the camera, he's, we're learning. I'm teaching how to use a sword. So, anyways, um, all right, let's begin the guards. Okay. So, your first guard you're gonna want to do is called roof guard, which is basically just a high guard that you would take when you're commencing, when you're taking a cut. So, and how you want to do it is you want to put the sword up. Like, really, all you gotta do is just do this. And what you're gonna want to do is you want to have your elbows. You don't want to do it like this because it's not, you can't see your opponent. I can't really see you. So you could easily just stab me if I can't see you. I mean, still, I could do that, but still it's better to just do it where I could see you and I could know if you're going for a cut to my legs, I could just and cut you right there like that. So I could just, whoop, and then if you're counterattack, I can just stab at you if you're rushing. And you could also cut from different angles, you can wrap from, you can cut downwards, but for this guard, you can literally cut this way, you can cut this way, you can cut that way, you can cut that way, okay? And also, there's another type of footwork called the passing clip that you can incorporate with the, with the, with the roof guard. So, let's say I'm in roof guard, I can leave put this leg right here. Now I'll loop the sword first. I can cut that way easier. Same throat this way. Or actually you wanna switch blades. Switch foot positioning. So all you gotta do is just, it's all, it's basically just, you gotta take this foot, put it over there like that. And same thing with this. Cause I actually don't wanna, I'm actually gonna stop using this for a minute. Cause I am kind of near my, I'm near the cameraman. I won't actually hit him with this because um, I like him too much. 
um, oh, that's not, this is perfect. I mean, still, you would, you would want to fight with these. These are the Red Dragon Superfetic Longswords. You definitely want to fight with these with protection, but they're way more safer than that. You're not going to die with these. So, okay, so now, okay, remember we said about roof guard. Hello, neighbor. Okay, so from here, you pivot with this foot. But first, another thing, when you're gonna strike, you want to leave with the blade. So what I mean by that, okay, if I'm striking from here, I want to leave with the blade, then do a passing step. Because if I just, and I mean, I don't really have anyone right now, but if like, let's say, let's say you're the opponent and you had a sword on you, right? If I lead with the foot, you can stab me. I'm not protective. But if I leave with the blade, I'm protective. Uh, if you do a counter attack or a counter thrust or counter slash, I could shut the blade aside and stab you or um, disengage. Or I could just counter. Basically, you could just counteract someone with a stab, basically. So it's like roof guard, someone goes for a stab. I mean, I could just boop. Loot the blade and stab at you. That is stuff. So, um, but yeah, let me show you the different guards. So, you already got the passing set. So, it's just like this, like this, like this. Remember, leave with this foot and then leave with this foot right here. So, you know, you're passing and stuff. So, anyways, um, yeah, it's good for when you're doing, again, that cut. And that cut because you get more because if i do it like i can still do it like this i can still do it like that but the passing step makes it more easier and more body mechanic better so I mean, that's if that's a word i don't think it's a word but i'm not really that smart i never went to harvest so i don't know now the next guard that i want to teach you guys is called long point it's my one of my favorite well, I used it. It's not really a good guard. I mean, none of these guards, I'm not a fan about these guards. None of these guards would be, you wouldn't really stay in those guards. Like, you wouldn't just be like in a video game where it's like the opponent's in this guard and they move around with it. No, I would want to switch guards. You know, you don't want to switch guards, not just. Make your, be per, um, don't be unpredictable, that's the thing. If you're staying in just this guard, if I stay in this this guard, you'll know what I'm gonna do. From this guard, I can only thing I can do is uh, stab or this, or I can hit with the palm of you. I'll be, um, I'll be predictable. So switch different guards and focus on your footwork and passing steps. Also bend your knees. That's definitely what you need to do too. Bend your knees. So then, all right. So oh yeah, roof. Like well, we we did roof guard. Now long point. Long point. There's different ways to do long point. Some people do it like this. I do it like this. So let me just get in the right position. So long point. I watched the Scalabrim video. He was talking about how you can't really cut from long point and i know what he means it's like you can't really do a structure cut like you can only do i mean these are not really effective well but then actually no you would have to no well, the thing with what he said is you would have i mean he said like the only good thing you could do is that and i agree with him because like yeah technically you're getting out of long point so if you're in long point it's considered this or it could be i think this is actually another garb i don't want the name of this garb but yeah, this is all important. So from here, I can just do a back and step and parry. So I can parry. I can parry from my right to my left, to my right down, to my left down. Like this guard's very, it's very useful if like someone's rushing at me, say you're rushing at me, and I'm in this guard, I usually just get in a long point and impale you. All these guards are really good. They have their pros and cons to them. Like, roof guard is, um, 
is not really good for parrying blocking. You're not, it's all defensive guard. You could still kind of parry, but it's not. It doesn't really work as much as long point. Long point is an offensive and defensive guard where you can you can attack with the stab and you can defend more effectively. Because if someone stabs at you, you can literally just set their blade aside and um, just strike them in the face or just the chest and stuff. Okay, so, and how you do long point here, if I can get it right here, you wanna, again, go, especially this is where I meet with the handshake. Can you see me? Can you see the. All right, so anyway. All right, so with the long point guard, you wanna have a handshake grip, so you wanna have your hand like this. And don't hold it too hard, but don't hold it too light. So, and have it about, have both arms straight out, so you can have a fret for your opponent. And you can just, if you wanna, let's say you're, okay, let's say you are, Let's say your opponent wants to chase you, right? You can just basically, okay, and this is another guard we're gonna talk about, fool's guard. So you can go from fool, you can step back, do your thing, and do that. Which is very effective for like, if your opponent is aggressive, you can literally just impale them on your sword, like a porcupine. And um, yeah, that's, that's long point. Now we're gonna talk about fool's, which is a good guard as well. People don't think it is because it's, here, let me show you what I mean. This is Fool's, or this is an interpretation of Fool's. So in Fool's Guard, you'd think, oh, my head's open, right? Well, not exactly, yes and no. Yes, if someone's quicker than you, they could just get a head strike at you. It's, it's really, you know, you're not really good at, it's not really a good defense, but, and let, but also you can, again, with the passing step, you can literally just bash it aside and strike them in the head. So you can, you should use the strong of your blade. Oh yeah. No, I should have talked about that first, my bad. Let, that's gonna be quick, all right, let's be quick. All right, so the strong, there's different parts of the blade. There's true edge, there's false edge, okay? And then there's the strong and the weak. The weak part of the blade is what you're gonna be cutting with. So I'm gonna be cutting with this side of the blade. So I'm gonna be cutting, like, I'm cutting with this part. This part, I mean, you can cut with any part, but mostly more biomechanic, you wanna cut with this part because it's weaker and you're not gonna really parry from this part of the blade. But the strong, so the weak would go about from here from the tip all the way to the middle of the blade. And then the rest of the blade is the strong part. This part is the strong part of what you wanna parry. So, so weak, strong. So more like maybe, yeah, like this. This is the weak part of the blade and this is the strong part. So the strong part is what I would Say I'm in fool's, and I'm in fool's guard. If something else that me, I could just hurry like this. Like power to do that. Basically. So that's. Um, I'm 